so your next review in Scotland is, as I understand it, on the 22nd of February, two days ahead of when uh, the Prime Minister says if, if the trends are still as good as they are at the moment, uh, restrictions here are lifted. Is it your instinct, and you're very familiar with all of the data, I know that, is it your instinct that Scotland will get in there and maybe even two days ahead of England? Well, anybody who's followed the, uh, the, the pattern of behaviour from the Scottish government over the past two years realises that the Scottish government on the whole have been much more cautious in their approach uh, than the UK government. Uh, so I would be very, very surprised if Nicola Sturgeon were to take the choice uh, in two weeks' time to go uh, further uh, than Boris Johnson is going. Um, in fact, when Boris Johnson made his announcement earlier this week, um, both Nicola Sturgeon and Scotland's health minister were we very quick to take to the uh, uh, social media to claim this was a reckless move and out of line uh, with the science. Uh, of course, what we've seen is despite these different approaches being taken by the Scottish government and, and the UK government, the, the actual outcomes from COVID have been very, very similar across the whole uh, of the United Kingdom. So we see Boris Johnson saying what he's done. We've seen just in the last couple of days, the Welsh government um, also uh, recommending the, the removal of certain restrictions, including wearing face masks in certain settings from the end of the month. So if, if Nicola Sturgeon and the Scottish government don't make moves on the 22nd, they will be the outliers compared to other parts of the UK. And I think there'll be a lot of political pressure and a lot of public pressure for us to at least start moving in the direction being taken in other parts of the UK and relax these restrictions. You're an experienced politician, and, and, and COVID is merely the backdrop to my next question, but it's a, it's a serious one. You're a unionist, but it's what it says on the tin, Conservative and Unionist Party. How tricky, as an experienced politician, do you think it's been the divisions between the nations of the United Kingdom? Uh, an SNP Green coalition in Scotland, as you just said, a Labour government in Wales, Northern Ireland, no government at all at the moment, but that's shared between the unionists and, uh, and Sinn Féin, uh, and only here here in England, uh, a 70 plus seat majority. How difficult has that been to do grown up politics in a national crisis, which COVID patently has been? Yeah. So I, th I think there's a couple of quite, quite serious issues have emerged from this. W one is that there's been a tendency, particularly, and we've seen this particularly in Scotland, where uh, the, the SNP administration in Scotland are, are keen to gain a political advantage from be, trying to be seen to be handling. COVID better than a Conservative government in Westminster. And that's led them to take different decisions and usually more cautious decisions around restrictions than the UK Conservative government. Now, the evidence shows us that outcomes in Scotland across the piece are really very little different from elsewhere in the UK. So there's no evidence that that more cautious approach actually uh, has been better than what's been applied elsewhere. But it's been very much part of the SNP narrative to say, uh, you know, we in Scotland are, are, are not as, as reckless uh, as the UK government. The, the other aspect of this that's also important is we have seen a lot of public confusion around messaging. So people will watch um, the, the, the national uh, TV uh, programmes you know, like your own and get messages from them. They'll then watch Scottish regional news programmes and get different messages from them. Yeah. Uh, and, and undoubtedly that's led to a lot of confusion amongst people as to Absolutely. what exactly is allowed when uh, and where.